or the tragedy visited us by the collapsed building in Ikoi, Lagos, is yet to be fully quantified as more victims have been confirmed dead. As of the last count, 21 people have been confirmed killed in the 21-story building that collapsed on Monday. Nine others have been rescued alive, but op as operators get more get more to continue to search. Now, the state governor, Babajide Songolu, who has visited the site of the collapsed building, vowed that anyone indicted in the incident will be prosecuted. And this is coming after indefinite suspension of the general manager of the Lagos State Building Control Agency, Bolang Uki, on Tuesday. Well, let's hear more from the governor himself. Like I said, I'll be signing an executive order to put um, a legal backing to the independent um, 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 inquiry panel that was set up. You know, and, and, and they have terms of reference to, to just mention to you will be to determine causes or cause of the collapse of a building under construction, whether there were full compliance with fiscal planning, um, building and building material laws in the state, to determine whether there was any supervisory or oversight lapse on the part of the regulatory authority in the state to determine the number of casualties and fatalities to examine any other matter incidental to any of the terms I've stated above and to make next necessary recommendation to, to guide against you know reoccurrence of such incidents in the state. Now Dr. La Dr. Oyebile, let's look at this issue critically now about we understand that there are about 50 uh, persons, according to eyewitnesses' report, that about 50 were being trapped in the rubble. Although right now we all understand 21 bodies have been recovered, but let's not forget the devastation that the families are going through right now, which can be very unbearable, even as they complain that the rescue efforts are quite low. What do you make of the whole scenario that has unfolded since Monday? Well, first of all, I think... Um the Lagos State Governor or the Lagos State Government has tried in the rescue effort because it's a tragedy. We might think it is not good enough or compare it with other clients. But I think with the effort made so far, the state government has tried. However, I want to challenge the governor. It should not be ordinary sand bites alone. This morning, I was in a public transport. And from the beginning where I boarded the bus till the point I dropped, I, I lighted. It took one hour. And the thing on everybody's lip was this uh, collapse. collapse building. And you know what they were saying? Everyone was saying that, yes, it is because it happened in Ikoi now, nothing will happen to those who own the property, but if it were to be Yanapaja, Agege, and the rest of them, government will seize the property as, uh, there's a law that says that if you are building anything and it collapses, you forfeit the land and everything there. And so, the, the, ev what everyone was talking about is that in the next few weeks, we'll forget about it. Mm. The governor said nobody will go scot-free. And I want the governor to walk the talk. It's good that uh, the general manager of the agency has been suspended. But what are the measures that are going to be taken to make sure this does not happen again? Honestly, you know, on Monday when uh, somebody uh, called me and said, I heard that a building, a building collapsed in Lagos or Ikoyi. I said, no, it can't be. I said, maybe it's in Agege or Yanapaja or in one of those remote places. And immediately I checked my phone. I saw, the, I saw it. Gerard wrote for that matter. He's a pro that is very, very prominent on the, uh, uh, in Ikoyi. So how did you get to build up to 21st Most floor and no one was able to come there and say that no work must stop here or whatever so the the, the, the governor must show us that everything must be done to make sure 
who are the people responsible for this? And sometimes also people have been blaming the architect, blaming the engineer and all that. Yes, you blame them. But you see, in this situation where we are in now, if the engineer says use so 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 mm of rod or number of cement, if it doesn't stay there, they won't. The uh, the artisans will not do what you ask them to do. So the problem or the blame is in very is in a lot of layers. What it calls for now is every one of us at our own corner. Mm. We must make sure we do our bit very well. The engineer, the architect, the site uh, supervisor and all of them, they must pay for their negligence. And the way to, for them to pay for their negligence is for the government to make sure that this is followed through. It is not a case where after a month or two, we just forget about it. And nothing... We, we, we have the case of the synagogue collapse. What has happened? Nothing is heard about it again. What has been the result of the inquiry that was set up? What has been the... Who are the people that are being prosecuted now? Those are issues that we must always talk about and put in the front burner. But the moment the government allows it to rest... Well, some of uh, you might say, yes, uh, is the job of journalists. Yes, it's the job of journalists. But sometimes you go around snooping around. They don't give you any information. So the government must have a key person that must, on a daily or weekly basis, give a briefing how far they have gone. This now, we say, oh, no, you, this is the last case. It will never happen again. God forbid, in another month down the road, Another thing will happen. We will forget that. We have forgotten about the synagogue now. It is this one we are talking about. God forbid another one happens in another month down the road. We forget this and focus on it. So, gov the governor must follow this through and make sure everyone, no matter who. Because, as I said, this morning, the whole conclusion, at a point I wanted to talk, but... Uh, it's, it's like it's life. like following the uh, the, the mob. Anything you say there, they already have their mind that no, nothing will happen to them. Is it not? They are the big people now. They are the one who built it, and nothing will happen to them. If it is in other place now, you will hear that. So, all in all, the governor we will always ask him, Mister Governor Sir, on so 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 day, this is what you said. How far? What has happened to those who who allowed fifty something mm. people to be injured, twenty one to be killed, or how many? Twenty one, yeah. Twenty one bodies recovered and so far. Still counting. Mm. Our prayer and our heart is with the families that have lost people, but the governor must must do something indeed. Take charge. Point taken, Doctor Yebule. Mr. Mwaje, you know, so far we understand the government, that the state government says it will prosecute those found culpable and, of course, make its findings public. But is that enough? Taking a cue of what we've had over the past period or so, we've had cases of collapsed buildings between the 2014 and 2020, about 152 buildings collapsed in Lagos. What do you make of this? This move by the state government, is this enough? <laughs> I, I, I salute the governor. Um, governor Babajije Somolu for always been in front uh, when issues like this comes up. But um, and uh, I, I think I watched him today. Well, 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 he was given the press talking. To, we speaking with the press, and uh, he said, "Is this one? We, we, you know, will not be put under the carpet." I salute him again, but I think he goes beyond that door. It goes beyond. I think we, we, we have a systemic problem here. It's not today. Um, we make noise. I call it noise because uh, after a while, we won't hear anything about it again. On the part of government, much still needs to be done. OK, let me even start with this one. The, the response time was is something we need to look into again. Because I, I listened to eyewitness accounts, and 
a lot of them were saying that they, they, it, this thing happened around two. And and around two. And before two. Respond, two and before responders came, it was uh, the state uh, government uh, rescue team came. It was about uh, about two hours, and we were doing the re you know the, the rescue by themselves before the military, the soldiers, and the police came to you know take them out, and they were hearing people cry. So the, that response time needs to be looked into again. This is not the first time. And then I'm looking at the process of trying to um, bring them out from that rubble. I, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm, again, I'm not impressed. Do I listen to the governor today? They have excavators. They have all, you know, all shapes and all, and they even have stand, standby. But it's slow. As I yesterday, I read, I heard that people were even, you could hear them crying from inside the um, wreckage and all that. As I today, nothing like that is happening. So I expect an overnight, you know. Um, it's strange. Uh, we're not new to this. Uh, again, the governor is trying, but it goes beyond him as a person. Mm. The system needs to be looked into again. We have a building. I mean, this is not the first time building is collapsing in Lagos. Over time, to d we hear, I think another one in uh, London yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, it happens all the time. But I want, beyond suspending the, um, the, the DG of uh, the Lagos State um, Control um, Agency, co uh, control, um, uh, building control agency. Um, there, there's a commission out there. There, there, are, there are agencies of government still responsible, like, like soil, te um, soil test and all that, apart from the building agency and all that. Those people need to be questioned. How? Wh what was, uh, when, who was monitoring the development of such structure? Mm. Who was monitoring it? It has happened now. <laughs> We're hearing so much. The uh, Minister of Humanitarian Affairs was in Lagos yesterday. The, the Inspector General of Police were, you know, was in Lagos. Um, and then you hear, oh, man, I, I can assure you that in day, like, let's say, two, th from tomorrow, next tomorrow, before Friday, all these things are over. We cannot continue to run our system. Like, we're talking about human lives here. Yeah. I saw a man crying, a woman crying. A cop, the, the daughter is a copper yeah. and mm. trapped in that building. Mm. Copper so trapped sorry. in that building. It goes beyond this. Right. It goes, and then they take these corpses away without even allowing people around there to identify Fire them, the if it's their cup, and they say, go and fill the form. We should go beyond this. It's really annoying. It's really, really annoying. People should be questioned. I should, uh, by now, should we, have, you know, we should have, hear people resigning. Resigning. If you, if, you don't, if you fail to resign, if I'm the governor, I give you like two days to resign. If you don't, I will fire you. When you do such, things will change. People don't resign here. You take responsibility for it. That's a systemic failure. And somebody should go in for it. While watching the governor, I saw the Commission of Urban Development just by the right, um, standing by, you know, standing by the governor. I mean, things cannot continue to go like that. These are families of people, they, I mean, who are trying to make a living. They, they went out for that, you know, to get all of that money. And then we're talking about this. Then. It goes beyond. As I said earlier, I salute the governor, but it's not about him. People need to take a fall for this. It's not just uh, suspending. I mean, it shouldn't be even suspension, because suspension means he may likely come back tomorrow. But it's indefinite in this case. I pray so. I pray so. It goes beyond that. We have to start looking at um, officials. It's, not, it's because it's not only in Lagos, so I'm not going to limit it to Lagos. Officials of government. Officials of government, when you build 21 story building, what is the capaci capability of the builder, the consultant, the, stri and the, the structural engineer and all that? Who are, who are those people? Go to the signage there. You don't even have their names. Hmm. You only have phone numbers. These are rules that must be obeyed. Hmm. And sanction applied, should be applied when you disobey such. But I would say because it's, it's Nigeria. And then we cry when things not like that. when things like this happen. All of us, you know, we come out, we comment, we're going to do this. Going to, days after, we keep quiet, and then it happen again. Then it's a circle. We continue yeah, again. It, it's it's really, not so. Yeah, it shouldn't indeed. be so. It shouldn't be so indeed. It's really pathetic. You know, what, you, you struck a chord there saying that it, because maybe it is Nigeria that that's why it is happening. But Dr. Oyegbele, let's look at this critically. You know, this 21-story building, we understand, is being developed by. Four Score Homes Limited, which has a portfolio of projects in the UK, South Africa, and of course, in the United States of America. So what could have gone wrong here? This is something 
begging for an answer. What happened? Well, you know that in the United States, you cannot bend the rule. In the UK, the same thing. South Africa, almost the same thing. But in Nigeria, anything goes. A former chief of uh, army staff uh, in Nigeria said, Nigeria is a country of anything goes. Now, even sometimes you drive past, you see stop work. They mm -hmm. put a stop work on a building, and yet you still see artisans working there. Then you ask yourself, what exactly is the meaning of this stop work? When they put stop work, it means that nothing should be done on that site again. But in Nigeria, um, on that, uh, one of the video, I think maybe it was on the social media or something, one of the people lamenting, what was saying is that, oh, one, 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 one. what that means is that they are look, just looking for money, that when Lagos State government or any state government comes, and they put a stop work notice on your building, what are they looking for? They will just find you or ask you to pay some money. It, when they tell you to stop work, it is not that they will do any structural correction. I like to be corrected. It is not that they will do any structural correction. It's just that, okay, who, who, who gave you a permit to start building this? You tell them or you give them some paper or whatever, and the, the work continues. Another day, some other set might come. But what we are saying is that there must be a central agency that will be responsible for that. I mean, I know that in Lagos State now, there is that law now that you cannot start a building until your building plan is approved. But who, who does that? Who listens to that? Go around Lagos Metropolis today. You see buildings springing up here and there. Most of this, it could be a small piece of land and no proper soil testing or whatever has been done because the houses there, there is a particular one somewhere in Agege. The former house there was sinking. In fact, it has sunk so much that the roof was something like this, so that anybody that wants to enter, we have to bend down. <laughs> the place has been sold off. A big building is coming up there, maybe a shopping mall, a complex or whatever. Was soil test done? <sighs> what was the pile that was put there for the uh, shopping, uh, the shopping, the shops? That have been made, that have been constructed there before they are approved. Maybe nothing. So, for as long as we begin to bend rules, first call, yes, I read they have houses in the US, they have in South Africa, they have in UK, they have in everywhere. Yes, their reputation might be intact there, but at the home front, anything goes. He, he comes. He talks to one or two people in the Ministry of uh, Environment uh, Works or what, whoever, whichever ministry is responsible, and they say, oh, it's a foreign direct investment or whatever. We are always looking for people, our own people, to come back home and come and build. Yes, it's good. But we must subject them to the same okay. rules that they are subjected to abroad. I mean, it is a good thing that... Our people abroad are coming home to invest. But we, we must not relax the role because they are our own, especially when it involves lives. Now, all these people that are dead. Hmm. How, I saw a woman, like, like, like uh, my colleague was saying, she sat down there. Her daughter, a youth corps member, was in the wreckage. And she was crying. You know what it means? You know what it means to have a child who has finished Which. education, you are looking forward mm -hmm. to his or her future, and then... It's been cultural. I mean, so it, 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 it is a different type of fish that mm. the first call people, they have reputation all over the world. What is their reputation at all? Mm -hmm. This, for me, 
has shattered that mm -hmm. reputation. Yeah. What he needs to do now is to sit down and ask those he gave the job to, what have they done? What went wrong? Why did it collapse? You've got 21 story building. I mean, it's not people like you and I who will build that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. No. When people are struggling to build a two or three bedroom and then you build 21, ah, it's, mm -hmm. it's really devastating indeed. Now, Mr. Waje, but from your own analysis, what are the processes you know, involved to you know, ensure a structure is safe to live in? You might not be an architect. Mm -hmm. You might not be a structural engineer. But what are the foundational basics that one should have at his or, or her mind when you are you know, erecting a yeah, structure? A structure of that magnitude. What are those basics that one should have? Okay. For instance, uh, let's start with legacy. In Lagos, you have building control agency. There is safety com Lagos, Lagos State Safety Commission still yeah. connected to that. Mm -hmm. And then we have Lagos State, Lagos State Material Testing Laboratory. Yeah. You, you, have, you have to go through this process. There must be paperwork that you've gone through this process. Then you have to consult um, experts with integrity. We are not talking about two-story duplex here, or a story building, or a bungalow. We're talking about two twenty-one story building here. It's not something for quacks. So you look for people who are grounded, people who have done skill. such before, mm. before you can then commission the job to them. But what we see here are quacks in all shapes and sizes, taking up responsibility of building this. I saw a letter being written by one of the old uh, um, struck engineer, you know, that, that, yeah. that, you know, told them you can't continue, seeing that certain things are not being taken, you know, the way it should. Mm -hmm. So that tells you they have a lot to do. The procedures are clear. Even a small building in Lagos, there are procedures to take before you erect them. Just as we were asking before, how come they have this credibility, they have this integrity in South Africa, US, and all that, and here we're having this? It's because, again, it's the system. Here you can circumvent a lot of things. You can, you can hire so-called consultants. Who, you can say an Ocado rider yesterday, then today he's a builder. He's an, he's, he's mm. calls himself a structural engineer, an architect, and you're wondering, you don't want to go through I mean, do, do some research. Let me see what you've done before. How long have you been doing it? Experience count here. But we don't want just to cut corners here. That kind of building should be right, you know, handled with, by people who are grounded in that, in that. Because at the end of the day, ha thank God it even happened now. But I'm not happy it happened because a lot of people had, you know, over 50 people. Mm -hmm. But then just imagine the building has, you know, has been completed and people have moved in there and then this happened. Mm. And then that's another thing I'm, I, I hope the Lagos State Government will now take. We take a look at the two other structures because there are three there. Yeah. The, there must be an integrity test right. there. Things, they must look at that building because, I mean, it's the same design, only that this one is 21 story, others are 15. And anybody, anybody who is involved, I pray we have the political will to deal with this matter squarely. Right. Because we don't do it this way, if we continue, we'll be toying with people's lives. When some security operatives besieged the home of Justice Mary Odile of the Supreme Court on Friday evening, many Nigerians regarded it as a strike at the Temple of Justice itself. Now, the Supreme Court has broken its silence on the raid. In a statement by its Director of Press and Information, Festus Akonde, the Apex Court said the invasion, which depicted a gory picture of war, appeared like a mission to kill or maim Justice Odile. While describing the event as uncivilized and shameful, the court says the raid was carried out under the guise of a search based on what it calls a questionable and baseless warrant. But who should take this shot for this? Dr. Gwekbile, you know, when you look at this uh, matter critically, the Apex Court seems to have had it enough with the state authorities, saying that the Nigerian judiciary in its statement cannot only bark, but can bite. And it has also begun, uh, begun a full-scale inv independent investigation into the matter. Now, what do you make of this whole seemingly situation? Well, you see... It's very, very unfortunate, as the cliche goes, those who don't read history or know history are bound to repeat it. This is not the first time this is happening. Mm -hmm. 
the temple of justice in the last six years or so has been so violated that you will think people there in government will sit down and think that what exactly is happening. If there are some fifth columnists who are behind this, they should be brought to book. But we have a situation where some years back, I think about two years or so ago, some justices of the Supreme Court, their residences were raised. Justice Nguata is dead now. But the man went to his grave with his re reputation battered. Mm. Up till today, who are the people behind this? who raided the justice house? Mm. Nobody can say. Are they faceless people? Are they people we cannot see? If the house of a justice of the Supreme Court can be raided and we cannot find those who did it, is it that there are no uh, CCT cameras or what? What is the big deal about this? Look, for me, if I were to be the Minister of Justice, this is the time for you to prove that you are a serious Minister of Justice and Attorney General. Because whatever happens to the judiciary, First and foremost, it comes to you. It is your beat. And you must tell the SSS, or DSS, whatever, all the security agencies. Because now, almost all the security agencies have denied having a hand in it. Even the EFCC said they don't know anything about it. So who exactly? Is it Ola Inka <laughs> Is it Esther Omakwari or Lai or anybody here? <laughs> I mean, these are things that should never even happen at all. To raid the home of a, a Supreme Court justice? Hmm. <laughs> Supreme Court justice is not an alkali magistrate. It's not <laughs> one backyard uh, uh, magistrate that listens to husband and wife fighting in one hmm. corner court in uh, Abessin or hmm. wherever there. Hmm. So... Uh, it is the highest temple of justice in Nigeria. And on Friday, it's almost going to a week now. We are still talking, oh, our uh, police is addressing press conference. We are not the one. The FCC is saying we are not the one. DSS is saying we are not the one. Uh, so who exactly is, 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 was responsible for this? Hmm. It's a shame. It is a complete shame and a complete slap on, on the judiciary. judiciary. Right. And I want the uh, chief justice talking... Uh, Tough. Tough. Mm. And for the first time, in fact, I was impressed because I've never heard him say anything that tough before. So it shows that it has, it's, it's costing home. Mm. Now, okay, Mrs. Uh, Odili is married to a political, politically exposed person mm. whose husband has gotten a lifetime injunction that should not be proved and all that. Is that why is, the house was raided? What exactly was responsible? Why? What were they looking for? Hmm. Did they find any evidence? Uh, any incriminating, incriminating evidence? evidence? The other one, they said they found some something million dollar or thousand dollar and whatever. What did they find there? Who even? I mean, from if the president, in fact, the first thing the president should have done, all the security agency chiefs should have been summoned and be questioned and maybe given some uh, marching order to go home and cool their feet and until they find out who because there's no way the president or the the, the, the government can wash his hand clean of this right and for you to show that you don't know anything about it it is time to act i mean what exactly is going on <laughs> everything no nobody knows uh, they read it uh, um, Igbo's house. Mm -hmm. Nobody is claiming responsibility. Nobody, no, nothing has happened to anybody. They are they, uh, now. Okay. A, a chief, a, 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 a justice of the Supreme Court has, has been ready. All right, let's we, we hold your thoughts. Now we have a caller from Ibadan Lushola. Please go ahead with your contribution. Please. Oh. 
I am Olushola Julius. All right, go ahead. I'm calling from Ibadan, your state capital. Uh, I greet the gentlemen in the house. Good evening, sir. Since we're having some uh, issues with your connection there, Lushala, if you can call back, we'll receive your call once again. So, but um, Mr. Waje, apologies there, Mr. Yeah. Dr. Yigbili. Uh, uh, let's look at this matter critically. If you're looking at this issue right now, there have been certain dimensions to this. But let's talk about the implications of this um, continued raid on judges' home in Nigeria today. What do you think it could pretend in our judicial institutions? It, it, it portends danger to our um, judiciary. It portends danger to governance. It has happened before, just like we, we, we were talking about building before. Mm -hmm. We collapsed building in Nikoi. It, ha it happened before. After a while, everything settled and we moved on. In 2016, it happened. Homes of judges of the Supreme Court were invaded in the dead of the night by security agencies in this country. And nothing happened. And because nothing happened, nobody took a fall for it, nobody was sacked, nobody was reprimanded, nobody was punished, it's going to happen again, and it just happened mm. again. And that is why, again, some people are having the guts to tell you they don't know what happened. Even when it's so glaring, we, see, we saw them. They were not spirits. They were in that compound for almost two hours. Mm. These, these were individuals of Nigerian security units. Some of them were in their uniform. Somebody went and collected this search warrant from a court. His name is there, a policeman. They went, said a, a whistleblower gave them an information, and they went there. So how can they now come and say they don't know? This EFCC den is denying. The police authority is denying. The office of the attorney general is denying. And the president is sitting down there. I mean, people should be dis... If we continue to run Nigeria like this, we will never, I mean never in capital letter, make progress. We will never make progress. This is not how a country grows. People should be able to take responsibility for the action. Because if you don't do it, it will continue like this and we will never progress. This must change. It must change. It must change. We invaded the Supreme Court. It was live. People were there. Almost two hours, and they were refusing to leave. They were refusing to leave. In a, a situation where the executive has the guts, the temerity, the impetus to invade the temple of justice. We're talking about Supreme Court justice here. Justice here. So what do you think can be done to remedy the situation on the ground? What can be done? We are not waiting. Well, okay, we are sitting down here. Before today, people have been saying it. Who are those people responsible? Names were given. It's not for me to say, we know what, to, what should be done. Do we have the capacity to, to do such? People should be taking responsibility for the action. Mm. Somebody sent them on that mission. Right, I Otherwise, it's a road I mean, of everything we have, I mean, you are saying we're going, to, we're, going, we're going to shift from A to B, A to B, B to, and then we're going to make progress. This is not progress. We are making progress in circle. We will not grow. Just like in Plateau State, for instance, today, because all, it, all of them are connected, yeah. where few num members of the State House um, uh, of Assembly will remove a speaker because they have the consent of the governor. That's when executive start infiltrating in other arms of government. All right, let me hold you should, It will kill governance. Uh, it will kill democracy. Right. Let's quickly, let's quickly oh, apologies. It seems we've lost the caller that we were heard. Sorry online you know but let me come to you now dr Yebile. if you're looking at this um situation i asked uh, Ms. nawaji how can we remedy this because already we're talking about the sanctity of the temple of justice itself how can we remedy this situation well it is not today alone that we have been talking about it there is complete separation of power and the three arms of government the way to remedy it is 
for the president to give the attorney general and the minister of justice a marching order that between now and so so time bring them to book bring those who have been uh, pinpointed for carrying this out to book and all the security agencies too the leadership of the security agencies should also be brought in how did your men go to do this thing if you are going to do something like that i think courtsy demands that the chief justice of the federation should be taken into confidence mm -hmm. that oh this is what has happened this is what we have seen and this is what we want to do it is the in we are we are always talking of sena climb and sena climb as if our own climb is insane mm -hmm. but in a decent society what will happen is that it is done that way but it is the judiciary itself that will take the action it is not another arm of government that will go into a justice house and raid the place and dabaru everything to use the language of the streets and then you now come out as i said earlier on Justice Nguata's reputation was damaged beyond repairs. And the man went to his grave. I mean, so what is, why, why are we always in a hurry to spoil people's name? If uh, Ms. Uh, Justice uh, Odili has been found wanting, to court. they should take her to court or uh, ask for, for uh, to excuse herself from the temple of justice and then act on it. You cannot, because of the sin of her husband, supposed sin, well, whatever, continue to witch on her. You know, even when she was made the chief justice of the Supreme Court, there were so many... So you cannot continue to tie our own progress in life to that of our husband. If our husband's reputation is uh, questionable, if she is not, hmm. why do you have to Take do this to her? And unfortunately, unfortunately, the opposition is latching onto this <laughs> to make point. The other day, I was the governor of River State giving the federal government 48 hours, and I was wondering, <laughs> 48 hours <laughs> ultimate number what? I mean, it has turned into politics. It's, as fella would say, it's, it's now rough or rough. Or. We should not be. <laughs> we should not bring our judiciary down. Every other aspect of our life perhaps has been brought in, uh, down, but we should not, not we should not allow the All judiciary right. to take, go the Mr. same Final take, Mr. Nwaje. We should do the needful. When things are not good, we should have the boldness to call out people. People went, it may be a mistake, just admit it. So, 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 so went there, it, we thought this is what it was, mm. but when we got there, we were wrong. We, we admit it. But when you say, we don't know them, we don't know, that's why we have unknown government everywhere today. <laughs> we should be able to know, know them. Know those. We should be able to know them if we must make progress in Nigeria. People must take responsibility. You cannot be a minister, but you don't want to take responsibility. Mm. You can't be a DG, without, you, all those issues. Mm -mm. When it comes to taking responsibility, you, you, take, you take a dive. No. People should be, and if they fail to do so, we have a precedent. Right. All right, let's quickly go on to our next topic of discussion on the show. The rise in insecurity in Nigeria has been partly blamed of reactionary rather than proactive approach by security agencies. Now, the abduction of some lecturers and their, abduct their children at the University of Abuja staff quarters is another sad reality. Now, talking about security challenges, the FCT Police Command has deployed additional security to the main and satellite campuses of the University of Abuja following the invasion of the sanctity of the institution. Meanwhile, it is the second time in five days that bandits are attacking communities in Katsina State, leaving many dead in the wake, and the bandits also destroyed shops in the area during the attack. Now, Dr. Oyegbile, let's look at the University of Abuja attack. This incident is happening within the seat of power. Bandits, abducted children, and lecturers. What do you make of this? 
We are like a record that is stuck in its groove. We are always talking about this security, security. And for it to happen at the premier city, or how do I, I mean, the city that is supposed to be the most impregnable for all sorts of uh, attacks, the University of Abuja is very frightening. And I think it is high time they take all these things seriously. Because a university is, suppo is a citadel of um, learning, of learning mm -hmm. and everything must be done to make the place safe. Now, if students are no longer safe on their campuses, then where, where, else, is safe? where else is safe? In those days when you are on your campus, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., you walk mm -hmm. anywhere. Mm -hmm. You are not scared. Mm -hmm. Nothing will happen. Sure. So what is, what is going on? Why are we... What, what has happened? <laughs> a university? It is not a question of whether the, uh, there is security there or no security there. But it must be that... You know what these bandits are telling us is that there is nowhere that is sacred. Hmm. I will not be surprised if they break into a government house. When I say government, I mean the residences of governors, mm -hmm. even also rock and the rest of it, and try to kidnap and make a statement. For as long as we continue to deal with them with kid gloves, with kid gloves right. they by the day are getting more brave and brave. Uh, we are comparing bandits with Agbero, comparing bandits with uh, arm robbers and so on, that, okay, you have, uh, some people have bandits, you have Agbero. <laughs> and then what is it? What is the difference? <laughs> is that the way we are going to continue? Absolutely. Is this the way we are going to deal with it? These people are getting brave and brave by the day. Hmm. So if you don't handle it very well, they will blow up in our, on our faces. And they are, in fact, they have already done that. Or, I mean, if you can go to the university, I mean, where, where else have they not gone? They've gone to the military headquarters, NDA. So what else? Hmm. Mr. Nwaje, mm -hmm. let's not forget the attack in Katsina where bandits killed many and looted shops. And of course, more than, for more than 40 minutes, we understand, mm -hmm. due to lack of security response, there was nothing done. And, you know, there isn't uh, telecommunications working in the area. Mm -hmm. So they acted within 40 minutes of time. And challenged. And, mm. you know, the shooting, the killings went on unhindered. What do you make of this worrying situation? Mm -hmm. That's just like what you're talking about, um, like the University of Abuja in, in Katsina. It's not new. This is not the first time. In Kaduna, you just named them. Oh, no state, of course. Everywhere. Now we're getting closer. I think today, today they could have the vice president. Uh, Vice principal in one of the schools in Abuja today. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so he tells he's coming home. You know. So, Katsina is the home, home state of the president. Right. So, you'd have expected a little, you know, things being done differently there, you know, just not to embarrass the president. But he tells you that it be, it's beyond him as a person. Again, if you fail to do the right thing, we keep having this problem. A situation where an individual is coming to tell us that we should not categorize these people That's as terrorists. terrorists. And it, it, it does that like, a, like on a regular basis now. He called for media interviews. He says it all the time, unchallenged. Like he's fronting for them. We keep having this issue. It's not about the police. It's not about. I mean, how many policemen do we even have covering the nation today? How many, mil how many military men do we have? How many soldiers do we have? It's not about buying to Keno and all that and saying, you're gonna, how many people are going to bomb? So we need to re, re strategize. These people are, they re strategize and they're coming closer to the seat of power. Mm. Who knows where they're going to strike? It happened yesterday, it happened again today. Who knows where it's going to be tomorrow? Right. So it goes beyond mere rhetorics. We will do this. Go after these people, they are individuals. 
tackle them, deal with them decisively, mm -hmm. and we will, we will save us all this problem. Well, that's a fine place to leave it, gentlemen. Our apologies. We cannot continue any further because of time factor, but let's leave it at that. Thank you very much, Mr. Tony Waje and Dr. Lainka Oyegbile. We appreciate your insight so far on Thank journalist so hangout.